Like Ducky was saying, for quite a while right now, things have changed. Even if the patch stays somewhat stale, things over time tend to develop in, into different directions. You know, for example, right now there's tweets going on about Kog'Maw as an AD carry. Right now, teams are just playing Juggernaut a bit again, playing peel back and just protect the Kog'Maw with the necessary disengage. That could be a good strategy for either of these teams. I'm just wondering what they will bring out. So this obviously is a new thing now compared to what we saw in the quarterfinals. A lot of AD carry bans coming in with Sivir, Kalista, Vayne as the first three. Obviously, Vayne has been a big pick for Nils. He's often one of the split pushers on the side of Origin before the group for these team fights. And then just full focus on Janin. I feel like he has enough picks, though, when it comes to, like, Jinx and, like, the late game carries Tristana. He's played it a few times. So H2K might just opt to run this Protect the AD Carry comp. Well, where's that? There is the Elise you talked about to fish out priority on the AD Carries. That means Corky should go up in value, something Origin have played a lot. And actually, both of these teams have got phenomenal AD Carries when you look at the league holistically. Traditionally speaking, Yes, Corky goes up in value. However, Kog'Ma does extremely well into him uh, in lane. And just later in the game, Corky obviously falls off because he doesn't scale that well. If you don't really hit that mid-game spike, then a protected Kog'Ma comp could definitely be viable because the strongest early game laner Kalista is out. The strongest utility carry Sivir is out. So that opens up to a lot of options. You kind of don't let the Vayne scale either because you ban there too. If you go for the Vayne Kog'Ma matchup for whatever reason, that would pan out. So interesting. But also, you can't really first pick that, right? Because we talked about Soas in the top lane versus Oduam, the Rumble is up, for example, and that was an extremely potent pick for both these top laners. And I wonder if Rumble is going to be a thing or it's going to be more bait. And we're going to see some of these new picks we've seen more and more, like we've seen Riven over in Korea a lot as a counter pick into the Rumble. Uh, we know Oduam has been using it. That could be potentially a little mind game we see in the pick and ban phase, but a lot of uh, time being used and we talked about the Corky. Oduwamne, 6-2 and two on the split with Rumble. So as 5-0, and zero. it is both of their most played champions. And as we said, with so many AD carries off the table, it's not too surprising to see Corky locked in here. And this is also a takeaway from Origin, who is a team that really shines in the mid game. It's fairly slow paced laning phase. And then once we hit like 10 minutes, they start getting roams going from Mythi, joining in with Amazing. And that's where they start snowballing the game, really. And it's between 10 minutes and 20 minutes to get these big, big leads. Corky, obviously, with the Trinity Force, fits in perfectly. It's been early rotated from them very often. So now it's been taken away. Now, while it, mean, while it may seem like an obvious bait uh, for H2K to take that Corky early and Origin perhaps being prepared, you know, Janna might pull out the Janna Kogma. I do like it in a first game of a best of five to pick something mid-game oriented with some aggression. Because I feel taking the back foot and just letting time scale and taking it slow is fine in the middle of a best of five. But I, I really like teams that come out swinging first game and at least put some pressure on your enemy to show something, to reveal something, and perhaps just take them off guard. And also because both these teams are super snowball reliant. Like yeah. when, once they fall behind, again, we had this on the analyst desk, five times Origin have lost. I mean, every game they have been behind at 20 minutes, they've lost it. H2K only won one game where they were behind at 20 minutes. So having a strong early to mid game might be the key to this entire best out of five. Who can perform the best in the early game? H2K tends to be through the lane swap, where Origin is more based on what Mithy and Mason can do to try and snowball these lanes here. Now, a Shen coming in early, that's a good start though to start getting this, uh, these lanes rolling. Yeah, Shen and Alistair are locked in. Usually, traditionally, uh, Shen is obviously a flex pick between support and top lane, but because they're locked in a support, Alistair two Roles are set in stone, a lot of information given away. H2K have a uh, pretty flexible in their draft still, and likely that Origin will leave their uh, their counter pick as fifth pick for mid lane later on. But I wonder what Niels is going to play with this Alice during the bot lane. It's also a departure for Soaz, because in recent weeks he's been playing carries predominantly, not the biggest tank player in history. Oda Wamna will know the matchup. We'll see whether or not that's going to be a Nautilus top, or if Nah is something he wants to play. A number of options here for Oda Wamna. Are we going to see the Nidalee? Re reaction coming out of uh, Amazing here. It should because, you know, we see an early game jungler locked in. You have double tanks locked already, so you could add a bit more poke and a bit more pressure in the early game from that Nidalee. Could be solid jungle pick here. Yeah, otherwise we could just see Amazing stick to Rex like Gragas. They're test the junglers for him because when it comes to the early game for Origin, Nidalee would fit in for how they want to snowball it. But at the same time, the Gragas has been so important and the Rek'Sai, when it comes also to scaling up a little bit at least, Gragas with the Sindel is still the jungler who scales the best into the late game. Yep. Even though there's all these early game junglers now, Lulex at the same time, he's not going Italy, he's not an Elise player. So we might see some of the old school junglers in that sense here in Europe, even though other regions still 
heavily prioritize Gragas. If you're running a protected Kog'Maw composition like Origin is doing right now, I, th I do think the Gragas can complement it very well because all you really need from your other roles outside of mid lane is peel. Mm -hmm. Defensive posturing, kiting back in defights, disengage is all you want. Keep them locked up as long so the Kog'Maw can keep attacking them over and over. However, we will need a heavy damage mid laner uh, from Peke. Victor is out, so we need to have something that can pack a punch and distract H2K to a sense. Otherwise, it will be too easy to locate the one target you need to annihilate, which is obviously the Kog'Maw. Yeah, either a scaling mid laner or potentially take a Lulu. If you want to go like full on Giacomo composition for Peke in the mid lane. This is interesting though, because H2K now steals it away, because at the same time, all of in the top lane against this Shen, it's such a fantastic pick against these tanks. And then when you have a Lula, we've seen Team Solomit use this in NA versus Gravity. You speed up that Olaf and he just goes crazy on your back line. Yeah, I really like the pick up here. Wu Olaf together as, as synergy-wise, I think it's fantastic. You know, speeding him up, wild growth on top of him, he literally becomes unstoppable. Switching the Nautilus from Flex top lane to support here as well, it is a point and click engage that Kog'Maw can't escape, so we need something here from, uh, from Xpeke at least to react if Niels gets caught and they overextend onto him. We need an answer. In the first few weeks of the split, he was running a lot of Vladimir, you know, for late game damage and scaling, but what is he going to do? We'll find out shortly, but to go back to the point you made much earlier, Krepo, H2K put together a composition that wants to get to you and wants to get to you quickly. We'll see if they can execute as well as they did against Giants last week. Probably said it himself. He hopes to mimic his quarterfinal performance. Let's see if HDK can upset the apple cart and take Origin down. It will be the Ari as a last pick for Origin. Now in terms of safety though, if Origin get to the mid game, they can rotate Niels down to the mid lane and put Ari on the side lane as a bit of a, an assassin roamer and skirmisher that kind of can survive safely on her own. So they do have a ticket into the late game farming wise. Just need to make sure that they don't give it too much of the map in that process. It's just such a scary mid game though for H2K. Olaf is such a good champion and starts snowballing even early on. Get him that level 6, get him that Black Cleaver as the first item. And first of all, Shen is not going to be a concern for him. And then in these fights here, there's not enough that can stop an Olaf in this game. I mean, we're almost looking like an Anivia putting up a wall in front of him. So H2K have a very, very, very powerful mid game. They have the lease in to secure as well the early vision. We know that Lulix likes to provide. It's, it's often the best he can do for his team in the early stages. Let's see what Origin can do though with this uh, pick for, for pick in the mid lane, because I like to see what he normally does in a playoff match. Absolutely everybody wants to see it. Prolly and Ducky shaking hands. And without further ado, it is time to hit the rift and find out which team will advance the summer playoff finals. It's always the best team that will win the best of five. So if we can hold our focus on for five games, we have a good chance to win against Oregon. We know we can beat them. In the split, we go we want to two against them, but I don't think best of ones does matter that much. We want to win playoffs. If we win playoffs, there's nothing to worry about. I want to get to the finals. It's a really big day to us. It's a best of five between the second and third best summer teams. Origin versus H2K. We're on the rift to find out who will be our first summer finalists. And Origin sticking to what we saw in the last few weeks of the LCS, where they're starting using more globals. We had some Twisted Fate coming in. We saw Shin support and now saw us playing it in the top lane. It is very important for Origin in this game. They can use the window where Soas can TP down to the other side of the map and start snowballing the mid and the bot lane. Because one on one against this Olaf, especially once we get that first item, that's where we start seeing the problems coming in for Origin. The real benefit of double global only comes out on the second cast though. If Chen ult is in first, then goes back to lane, teleports and cooldown, then teleports down again. That's where you get the clear value from. <laughs> the card's going wild. Advantage Peke. Damage favored Origin. So H2K invading in, placing the three wards so we can basically spot every single entrance, needing just one around the mid lane. To see, I think Origin obviously gonna mirror it. So not a whole lot happening here. There's too many syllables in Origin, apparently. I wanna see if H2K opts for, I wouldn't call it cheesy, but one of the things you can do with all of in a lane swap 
is where you go in and you make sure he takes some damage on these jungle camps in the early game. He can even tank up a few minions and he drops fairly low on HP, so his passive kicks in, the extra attack speed. And only when you have these fast pushing lane swords we see in Europe and in North America, you can just take down these towers so, so fast. And even 10, 15 seconds can matter when it comes to making the next move after the tower goes down. Early on though, Lulas and Oda is just uh, beating the wolf camp. I mean, we've seen that before in the past where Oas would on purpose tank tower shots to make that quicker. However, nowadays we bounce away back to the top laner. So you don't really want to lurk around in that top lane on 20% HP because then it's an easy you know, pick off from the opposing team. You also have obviously the teleport. So you take the tower, go back and you can return to lane. And then you have that situation where Maybe possibly HK can use the fast tower to swap down earlier before Origin can either take down the tower or recall in time. Early move in the mid lane. Level 2 for Kessing. Got that on the Grump. Yeah. Pekka needs to be careful. That is the benefit of doing camping, uh, noticing that it is indeed a lane swap. You just get full XP to support, support starts roaming. And then mid lane's under pressure. Traditionally, though, in Europe, in lane swaps, mid lane has been pretty action free. It's been a 1v1, no jungler involved. So, should be a true test of the skill of these mid laners. In the next, say, three minutes, once these towers go down, lanes go neutral again, then we can see some roams and ganks. A few people in the top lane, a few people in the bot lane, junglers are jungling. Pretty standard European lane swap overall. And we had a bit of a discussion regarding the lane swap earlier this week between HTK and Origin. Who's going to come out ahead? We can take a look at some of the averages here in terms of kills, dragons, etc. We'll see whether or not the averages hold true, because as you said, Origin have been in the dark for a little while. Yeah, interesting. Amazing join party in the bot lane to push the tower down quicker. He throw went the crux. Perhaps he did one big one. No. So basically, we got blue buff. Photo Amna. He took the one together with Lulex. Obviously, that's what you can do with the resin pick. You don't really need the blue buff early on. So he's going to get a bit of an advantage. And of course, he bounced the wave up top. We're going to have to see Origin as a team is sending back Soas. So this wave is going to push down towards Old Omni as long as H2K bounces it correctly, which means Source might be in a little bit of trouble when it comes to catching some farm. And that was the reason Amazing showed up, but they realized that this tower was going down too slowly, but in their strategy, Origin seemed to favor bouncing the wave back to the Karkma, who has farm priority number one to get him fe uh, fed in this composition. So they want to get Source back to the top lane as quick as they can. That's why Amazing stopped jungling, went down to that tower. Interesting adaptation here. Let's see if it pays off. Obviously, Kog'Maw with the safety of his turret behind him wants to keep farming. I would love to see Lulex go top now once this wave starts pushing down towards Old Omni and take an early gank on Source. If you can shut down a Shen in the early stages, he never gets to apply that global pressure without losing something. Both junglers are thinking the same though. Amazing is here to protect his top laner. Lulex is going to connect though. He does. There's the resonating strike. Amazing's in a little bit of trouble before a decent trade. Forced to flash defensively. Odo Omne has Ghost. The Viking is coming in. Another sonic wave with red buff connects, as does the undertow. Amazing and Soas turn back in. First blood may be secured by Origin, and it will. Soas flashes forward. It's a trade. Equalize. Odo Omne now has red buff and will stick in lane with those vicious strikes. So both top laners here getting the early kills. Lulex, he jumped in on his own and we saw Odo Amne with the Ghost. He was trying to follow. Obviously doesn't have the same kind of mobility as the Lee Sin. So a trade. Wave is still pushing down towards Odo Amne. So he's going to have a small experience lead from this one here because Origin decided to send Source back to that top lane and say, you're not going to stay, but that's for, for Nils here on his hyper carry. Good read by Amazing showing up where he was needed. Luckily, he gets the body slam on Lulex. I can't imagine how that play would have went out should Lulex have flashed the body slam and still uh, kept going aggro because then obviously Oluwamu could, Olu could come in, connect those axes, pick them up again, throw them out again and eventually kill both of the targets. So good thing for Soaz here. He's actually leading in CS now too because he managed to safely push in that wave because he had the better HP at the end of that trade too. Talking about the lane swaps, this thing seems to now have settled down a little. Towers traded to Fisher, I believe. You cursed H2K earlier in the split. Yeah, sorry. Breaking down their lane swaps, and then all of a sudden H2K started to fall to pieces. This is not the same mistakes that we're seeing towards the end of summer. Even trades back and forth between both teams. Yeah, it's what we saw against Giants as well for H2K. They were so much better in these lane swaps, and it gave them a huge advantage in game one and two. It was not until we saw standard lanes, they started struggling a little bit. Losing trade, taking a bit of a trade. Not a whole lot's gonna happen here. Now we kind of reset. The whole map, we're back into standard lanes. 80 carry-wise, Nils is slightly behind an experience, but he has the wave pushing into the water. 
Yeah, lane is a little stale and rough at the earlier stages, but once these carries hit level 6, then the poke potential comes in. We'll see the better skills of Master will end up winning that lane, but obviously Kog'Maw scales better. Both are aiming for a Triforce spike, but I think Triforce on Kog'Maw is such an interesting concept because it's like an early mid-game spike item on such a late-game hyper carry. Just contrast here. Oh, a little bit of an engage in middle. Amazing Alulex, they're both reading the same playbook because they're both in the same area of the map once more. And Lulex has been very, very active. Notice how the top lane was pushed. Oh, I'm there. Hey! My, my, <laughs> just checking, you know, he wants the pink ward. But notice how it's Odo Omni with the pressure in the top lane. Being that Lulex can freely be around the top side and move in for a gank, he finds amazing, he forces a flash. So, decent start for him on Lee Sin despite dying up in that top lane. However, in the Shen Olaf matchup, yes, Olaf will have the pressure, but from level 6 onwards, Soas can always arrive at a whim. Just simply cast ulti, worst case teleport afterwards, and you're still fine. So good good read from Odoam to use that one level advantage where you can make a pick where Soas can't immediately react. And that's why we're gonna have to see H2K. Once they shove in the top wave, that's where you can start making the plays. Once you see Soa stuck on a tower and Odoam is free to roam as well, you can use him. You don't wanna take a fight otherwise if you know the Shen can just join in instantly. Because that's where he's the strongest, when he's using his own lane pressure onto the other lanes with his global. Early Dragon started from Origin here. H2K not responding at all, staying very far back on the map. There they are. We did see Kissing just on the side of your screen. First time playing on this Nautilus. I believe he caught Peke with that dredge line, but Dragon number one goes to Origin, taking advantage of H2K's back timing from that bottom lane. That's despite H2K having very good early vision in the river. Notice the three pink wards around mid. Ryu has been having basically a safe lane where you can just constantly shove it in when you play against these roaming assassins. If you keep them stuck under their, to under their tower, obviously they're never going to be able to leave without you spotting them, and their kill pressure goes down for Peku. We know also he is a mid laner who likes to sit, obviously, and farm in the early stage. So us is baiting in order one member. Look on your minimap. Approaching is the cavalry. Kogma and Alistair are on their way. So us might be able to just bait in Odoan and make him a little bit too overconfident. However, bot lane's empty, so they should spot that ward. The bottom lane here for Origin as well, so they can spot where exactly the support or AD carry will be. The lane's pushed up. So Origin are working with a lot more information right here. Well, there's the Ragnarok burn. The moment the taunt lands from Soez. And with the support, it looks like Origin have set their sights on another outer turret. Nobody from H2K has responded yet. So Origin are going to get a little bit of time to get some auto attacks down. Kasing did read the situation though and recalled very early from the bottom end to join. Uramna here, they might even try and look for something. So three guys. No Uramna, ulti. He's, he's, he's no ulti, gets taunted. And that was just too easy from Origin. Yeah, you can't go for that play when your Corky is pushing out the bot lane. You know the top side of the map is populated by five Origin members in the worst case scenario. But the worst case scenario is also likely because Hyonan has been pushing that bot lane constantly, has found nobody defending that at all, and obviously Soaz has one of his two globals, one teleport summoner spell used to go to the bottom lane. Good adaptation, good map play by Origin. And now Lulex has to show himself in the top lane to defend the wave. That opens up for Amazing to get a free gank on the other lanes, even with Shen teleport available. Whenever you force that jungler to just sit and defend lanes, it gives you so much information on the map. Mason gets, gets a Rift Scuttler, check the mid lane as well, because Lulex was sitting there trying to clear out the last few waves. Big, big mistake from H2K. They could just take the wave and just farm. You don't have to force anything right there. Origin not overstaying their welcome in the top lane. We can see that Niels has already backed to pick himself up a Zeal before resetting back into the lane. And the lanes have just swapped now once again. Oda Wamna and Soaz move down to the bottom. And as it stands, Origin have just got small advantages that they keep accruing as the minutes roll by. A little hesitation from Niels. He went to the left side of his base, only to turn around and go to the bot lane. It seems that he values the safety of his own turret behind him, over pushing potential on an extra turret from H2K. I think that's the right choice. When you're playing a late game scaling hyper carry with a protected Karma composition, you really just want to be safe. He picks up the jungle camps along the way as well as you can spot on your minimap. Mid lane's trading even and amazing. He's just providing pressure everywhere he needs to. Even if it's in full vision, he doesn't really care. He can still start clearing one of these three defensive pink quartz from HCK and Origin can slowly creep out the vision on the minimap. Well, we can see how amazing needs to always respect where Lulex is because he's fallen slightly behind the early stages. Seven on the side of Lulex, six only for amazing. So he doesn't want to go all in for the gank. He's just there, as you said, Krepo, to add a bit of pressure, help maybe clear out some vision. This mid lane tower is open though because Peke used his entire mana pool and recalled HCK though. Not going to be able to take down because Origin, again, both teams are constantly just moving members 
between these lanes and trying to always respond to each other. This obviously leaves open both sides lane. Shen is pushing on an empty lane on the bottom lane. Kog'Maw and Niels is pushing on an empty lane too. So if they survive that push, which they did, then again, they have the first move to make. Because now they have side lane pressure, mid lane pressure since Pekka is coming from the base. And that traditionally leads into support and jungle grouping up and moving into the enemy jungle for deep wards. So now removed two out of those earlier three pink wards already. So Origin, they were at a risky point, but they didn't break. And now they can capitalize on that advantage. Yeah, I don't like the fact that Kissing is following Jan into the top lane here. It's just a Shen on his own. That meant the bot lane suddenly was super open and Origin walked in, got full vision. Rulix can't do anything on his own. He needs his support to help. So at least we have a 2v2 battle. Always with, with uh, respect though for the potential globals that can join. So what's this gonna get? All the families, look, he's sitting ready in the bush in case a play happens. Otherwise, he's just waiting for the wave. We did see the moment Oduwamne moved into the bottom lane and Origin pushed into the tower. Niels backed away. Origin not only have some deep vision, they've got the fan support behind them. And both of these teams seem to be reading each other's moves relatively well. Even on gold, even on towers. Other than the dragon advantage and some vision that Origin have deep, they may have control over the pit once it spawns for the second time. The way the lanes were distributed about one minute or two minutes ago, that's exactly what Origin want. They want the enemy AD carrier to face off against the Shen without turret pressure. There's no way Kiana was going to get that tier 2 tower down. That means any fight, any play, any action on the bottom side of the map will result in a straight 5v4 since Corky can't cancel Shen ultimate either. Such a just big pressure and map advantage for Origin. Then they can get deep vision and they will likely I try and catalyze on that division with a dragon. However, that's what HCK is trying to prevent right now. They're trying to ward around the dragon pit. You see a new minimap. Lex is skirmishing around right there. We can also see how uh, Janen went back. Couldn't afford the trendy force, so instead upgraded his boots yeah. to be ready yeah. for this dragon spawning here. Everyone has the time, obviously, especially in 514. So now H2K is setting up. Black Cleaver is completed. That's the first big spike for Oduam there. And then also the boots now for Janen. There is 1.4 gold unspent on Neil, so he has the base to get that and dragon spawning in 10 seconds pressures in the mid lane too to origin their timing is not working out for this next dragon just wanted that one more wave to be able to afford the trinity force for Niels, and that's gonna give up at least the river control h2k might not be able to get anything else however if they lose dragon then they can capitalize with an extra mid lane tower that likely will be exposed you know teams moving to dragon leaves mid open you can punish that can ro roam to the top side if Soas can manage to get the push going. So there's still options available because HCK did not manage to take that dragon in that 20 to 30 second window. Due to this fairly slow early game in the mid lane at least, Pekka didn't go for the loot and Zeko rush we've seen a few times. If you get the large rod on your first back, the 1250 volts instead. Morel Nomicon, not the same kind of burst, but in a long extended fight with the cooldown reduction, Pekka can still be very dangerous. It feels like HCK is afraid to commit. They had. A distinct window, 4v5, if they track the items on the Kog'Maw, if they track this base timing, they could have known that he had to base, or at least be two items down in a team fight with an earlier game AD carry. They could have contested that dragon, they could have taken that dragon, especially with their composition, which is which drives in grouping up. You want to speed up the Olaf, send them in, land the initial poke with Corky and just straight up engage, but they're giving Origin these dragons pretty much uncontested. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, Krepo. And as you mentioned, Origin will take an advantage in the objective side. We do see Niels is still marginally down in CS, however, his gold has been spent on the Triforce. And for H2K, they have done a lot of work on Pekka's tower, so we'll need to see if H2K can knock it over. Both of these teams very, very even. And this is a little bit... I don't want to say unexpected. We did feel once a team got a lead, they would be good enough to close it out. But we're approaching 20 minutes and... Trading blow for blow thus far. The safe play in game one of the series. It is two very, very good early game teams. Two teams who got five and seven K goal leads against Fnatic when they faced them. So this is where the teams are strongest. These early to mid game transitions and then obviously again get that lead and start snowballing it. Because as we mentioned, once they start falling behind, they really don't do too well. Yeah, they really do not. Analyst has talked about it and there's your stats. Goal lead at 20 minutes. Look at those win-loss ratios, but the more impressive or disappointing is the loss record. One and six when HDK are behind at 20. Zero and five when Origin are behind at 20. With a few more towers falling, these gold leads could spike. I like this play here for H2K. Obviously, Origin is trying to mirror it in the top side also with the dual lane. But H2K as a team, 
didn't necessarily have to take any fights early on because you can still wait for the Trinity Force to be complete. You can wait for the Olaf to scale up a little bit. Lulu maxing Whimsy second in the mid lane again to add more mobility. So like you scale really well with the levels and, and a little bit of the, of the time. You didn't have to all in early game. So I quite think HD has been playing okay. Mm -hmm. Sitting back a little bit. Two towers now for them. Or three towers, sorry. I don't quite agree though. If you if you look back for the last five to six minutes, not a single long cooldown ultimate has been used by either team. That has to be almost in Origin's favor because they're they're scaling comfortably into the late game. Not a single play was set up by H2K. They had a win on a dragon, but they could have sent Olaf downwards. However, finally some action here in the mid lane. Well, wild growth not going to be used yet. Ryu flashes the engage. Looks like it will fizzle, but they get the summoner spell. Back to the point though here. Keep my on, on. Yeah, board's going yeah, on. Board, yeah. Sorry, Deficio, I'll have to cut you off as here comes Oduwamne. Reckless swing will throw down as Yon and takes out Peke. Neil Zimithi trying to get out. Stand United was fully channeled and so has with a great taunt. But Amazing comes over the wall to take out Lulex. Bounces back Kasing. And they end up trading two for two in the re-engage. So two for two in the end here. H2K showed what they can do with the Olaf. TP in behind. Now all cooldowns gone real. Maybe looking for more, but has to be careful. Not going to connect to the taunt from Soaz and H2K not relenting the pressure. Niels is low on HP and H2K may get a lot of damage on this inner turret. I like the adaptation from Kasing though. He walked up towards Mithy and said, no, I'm going for Peke instead. Regline connected, immediately got blown up. Soaz wasn't even ready for it because he ulted Mithy. Good thing about Amazing though, he saved that fight. He came in with the body slam flash over the wall and then a good casket to knock in. Whatever it Kissing. was, Kissing into the tower, get another kill. That fight could have gone way differently. Watch that again. Ryu and self ported in. Good flash, though. Good flash. Pega trying to save his charm as well. See when is Ryu gonna react in time. And now it's his TP's coming in for both top laners. And obviously, Return Mithy taking so much damage before he has a chance to really lose his ulti. All the speed delay, just watch the Dredger here from Kissing going on Pega and then follow Amazing as he comes over the wall from the bottom side of your screen. And here's the thing about this comp H2K is running and why I think they didn't have to make any plays in the early game. The fact that for the next 10-15 minutes, this Olaf is going to be able to single out targets. Corky is going to be relevant in terms of damage and even the same for the Lulu. They don't have to worry about how late game damage is going to be from Nils because it's still such a long time before we hit it. And when you face the Shen in the early game, you always got to respect the impact he can have. Great base stats, the ulti of course to join in on the fights. So h 2 have been waiting for at least one item completed on every carry before saying now we want to start taking the fight. Traded 2 for 2 though, was very close to the tower and that cost him a bit. Luckily before the fight broke out, h 2 did get that additional tower. So it has given them a marginal gold lead as we approach 20 minutes. At what point do h 2 start channeling, uh, challenging Origin on Dragons? Maybe this next one. They do have those items you talked about to Fisher and Oduwamne and so as. Going top, but there's no TP for Oda One there, whereas Soez has Stand United and his teleport available. Map play pressure should be in favor of Origin. Yeah, and Niels is stuck in the bot lane split pushing. Origin is one of the few teams that actually keeps Niels in that bot lane once split push phase starts. I think it could be trying to ass assassinate people there too. I think Origin would be fine trading even a tier 2 tower right now to get their third dragon of the series because that just puts them so close already to a five dragon potential win condition, especially with a composition that. And it's fine in the late game. You can even give up a couple later on and still get to that magic number five. So let's see if H2K is finally prepared to commit for a dragon fight and if it works out. They do find themselves down in CS. A pretty sizable margin for Niels. Amazing does have some kills to counterbalance the fairly hard farming that Lulix has been putting on. And of course, Gragas scaling will be very good. But this is the last outer turret remaining for H2K. And Peke takes a little bit of an uneven trade before backing off. Switzerland connects. Oh, to Fisher, they may want this. There's Ragnarok down. Ghost will be up in a few seconds for Odo, but no ultimate for a potential yeah. dragon fight. Two very key ultis gone. Pekus, obviously on the Ari, and then the very important one for H2K. The entire comp is built around Odo. I'm mean, popping that ulti and just running in like a truck and hitting Nils in the face. <laughs> Needs to go back and defend though. So right now, Origin have the potential 5 plus 4, but they're back in very far back with no ulti and Pekka. They give up this dragon. So once again, H2K has been waiting for this mid game, and that's why they're turning on the power. I do like the combination of slows that H2K can manage to produce. If a glitter lands lands, it probably guarantees that the next axe is going to land, guarantees the next axe is going to land, guarantees the next glitter lance is going to land. So really good chain CC potential on key members, forcing Xpeka's ulti pretty much there, but trading tower for 
Dragon on the side of Origin. Not too bad there. I think they're pretty happy with this. Yeah, you stop again, as you mentioned, there potential five dragons coming in. Getting the first one amazing. Takes away a buff from himself. So Origin staying around the Baron on top side, but don't really have any vision to place and to cure anything. So once again, Dragon is gone and all the teams reset the map a little bit. HK has no reason to go in and face check this Baron here. Both of these teams very, very even in the first game of the series. And now we see who can play the map more effectively. With all outer turrets down, slightly more global pressure from Origin, they should have some tools to push out. Teleport will be up for Odo Wamne as well, so see that come into effect. Odo has used the Ghost and a very good ulti. We'll avoid the knockback. Now Origin's leaving that bot lane pushing for quite some time. They were using it just to buy some time and fake a Baron bait because they had more members concentrated in the Baron area. However, this just gives a... Yeah, teleport. So has, has to teleport right now because he was making for a pick. So they're investing time into making a pick. If it fails, that would mean Soaz loses his teleport. So now the map should be in favor for H2K. Remember, all of us know ulti right now. In case a fight breaks out, Koshen can still join. Mithy's looking for it. They're not that afraid of Old Omni if they can always CC him and just knock him away. H2K he going in the... Oh, Lulex, 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 Lulex gets knocked back. He gets knocked up. Wild Growth and will not save Lulex's life. There's the stand United into the flesh. Ryu's been taunted and taken out. Amazing drops the barrel. Yarnan has flash and heal, but he's holding on to them. He's taunted. It does not matter. Origin find three. And look at Baron. That was not your fight to take, H2K. Lulex jumps in way too aggressive. There is zero vision in that jungle either. Origin gets everything they want. Oh, Amna, you better pentacle now. Well, Taunt doesn't connect, but we did see the Depth Charge knocking up Origin. Baron is still being ticked along. Ragnarok is up, but Odo Amna is exhausted. Flash over the wall from Niels. Baron will take him out. Amazing still ticking on Baron. Well, H2K get the delayed ace. Baron should be secured here for Origin at the cost of Neil's life. Yeah, H2K taking a fight at that point may not be that bad, but doing a max range Lee Sin Q connecting in full vision. It is incredibly easy to read how that was going to go. And the only person, watch this Q connect. One second, two seconds. His mind is telling him no, but his body, his body is telling him that the only person he can kick is Alistar. It's not a good thing to tell your body. And obviously, Luex drops. And then just watch two offensive flashes here. First, Taunt flash on Ryu. Amazing connects with Body Slam flash because he wants to get the kill. Here, combo is going to connect by Mithli. I think it's another flash used offensively. Look, look at Peke. He just wants to connect the charm in time. Another offensive flash coming out. So four flashes used by Ordin because they know they're going to win that fight and it will it will get them a Baron. Man, the minimap, if you guys were looking doing that replay. Again, Odo Amni, he was running down from the top side. He wasn't even near. And Lulix goes in. That is so difficult as well for teams because how do you tell that guy, don't jump? And he's already in his mind being like, I can make the big play right here. I can get that kill, secure the Baron. And the team is just being like, no! And he's flying in and then he just <laughs> dies. Do you think it is because he has a substitute on the bench waiting to potentially come in? Is that, because you say always like, yeah, when things go bad, we can have a sub coming in. But when you have the guy really sitting there waiting for you to make a mistake, perhaps that prompts you to make these plays where you think, yeah, I have to show something big or, or I'm out. I have to carry or I may get benched. It's a question we may have to ask H2K later because that team fight cost H2K five kills in total, a few thousand gold, the Baron, and with the global pressure from Stand United now available, so is just gonna have a lot of fun pushing these lanes out. The rest of Origin are grouped on bottom. Yeah, we just talked about how these teams are so good at pushing the, the leads they have Origin already. Gonna use the long range of Nils, but he has to be so careful getting close. You never want the first axe to connect when you have no flash on the side of Nils, because then the next one is going to fall on the next one. So as though, as you mentioned, just by pushing, you buff up these minions. Love it. Second item, Thorn Mail, to counter both Olaf and Corky. Hell, even Lee Sin, he decides to throw some autos down. And with the response from H2K, Origin now have a large number of auto attacks on the bottom turret. Explosive cast used to slow down the engage, but amazing, should be tanky enough to escape. And it looks like the cannon minions took out the tower in the middle lane, so advantage origin once more. Not sure if uh, Lulex didn't have a ward to connect to there, because I think he honestly could have kicked back Amazing and killed him this time, but he played very defensive instead. Instead, just jumped back to the minion. So H2K managed to defend at least one tower, but they're still now falling behind. Two dragons, third one coming up soon. Origin, prime position to take the next one. And H2K's window is closing. 
There is one small solace from the last few times we did see Origin, when they had a lead and when they were pressuring towers, at least towards the end of the split. They sometimes stuck around a little too long. They sometimes got a little caught out. That's when they were they playing for fantasy, though. This time they're playing for a potential pickup uh, to go into Worlds. I think it'll be a slightly more tempered execution. I liked it at the start of the split, you know, going for those extra kills, fancy. Niels having the highest KDA of a single player in the history of LCS on this Urgot game, I believe it was. Not quite as audacious this game, and they don't need to. But right now, you see the difference as well in just instant builds. Even though the build for Corky and Kogma are pretty much similar, maybe just the boots differencing, but in terms of gold spam, so much more damage on the side of Kogma already, and the game's only 27 minutes in. It's only gonna get worse. Uncontested Dragon for Origin. As long as Niels continues to scale up, he's gonna have the damage to finish it off. The one caveat, if H2K find an opportunity for Odo Omne to get in Niels' face, if, that could be the only way they can claw back his gold in. Exactly, we're only 27 minutes in. The Olaf is still gonna be extremely powerful when it gets connecting or trying to take down this AD carry. There's still decent enough damage from Jan, he hasn't fallen completely off yet. So H2K is not out of the game. They just made it so much more difficult for them to, to win it. Now when Origin starts committing on these deeper towers though, it does open them up very easily for flanks. And that is traditionally the counter to like these one type of carry setups with low mobility. Get you listen on the flank. Don't go from the front door. Take the side door or the back door. Get behind them, kick them into your team. And then Olaf can wreak Havoc. But then Lex will need to split off here, get some pink wards, find an opening somewhere because we saw it before, if he goes for the straight up instinct from the front, it is too obviously. You have a knockback from Alistar, knockback from Gragas, knock up from Alistar. Anybody can stop that combo. Worst case, Niels can use the flash as it's about to come available again. Look at the setup here for Origin. They have a slow push going in the top lane. Massive wave being built up. Saw sitting in mid, keeping Odo Amne busy and the rest of Origin on the bottom side. So you have three lanes effectively now pushing in, using the minions really well. It opens up for a very easy rotation. Later on, wants to take down this tower in towards mid or then towards top, which also gives you Baron control right after, because that's coming up. 1 minute 50 seconds, so they're setting up the map really, really effectively. All they gotta avoid is to engage. The flash hook, Kassin gets taunted, he's now in trouble. Wild Growth will not get used by Ryu, he's holding on to the cooldown. Support from HCK dropped his origin, looking for an escape route, a re-engage from Amazing. Here comes Odo Wamne. He's ghosted into the fight, and we've got a battle on two fronts. Lulex is being focused out by Soez and Amazing before using the kick defensively. Amazing should be dropped. No! He stays alive! Soez connects with a taunt. We did see a kill off screen. Odo Wamne is down. Soez and Amazing zoned Hyanin the entirety of the fight, and Soez is going to get out alive. H2K, keep taking fire. Fights, but Odo Amne is not there. He's the key part of your competition. Oy. There's not a whole lot of value in a Lulu Corky together. They don't have any damage without Odo Amne there. Another poor engage, in my opinion, from H2K. Yeah, very forced hard engages. And the problem is, if the enemy team spends time killing your support, like here on Kassink, for example, look where Odo Amne is right now. You want to use that time to have Odo Amne hit the enemy carries at the same time. Watch it as he comes in from the left flank right now. You also will see the value from an exhaust. While the slow is obviously negated through the ultimate from Olaf, the damage reduction part is still applic or applied. So that means you can still shut him down a little bit. Eventually, Mithy is peeling your beautiful double knockup. Speke somehow managed to survive, dodge those axes. And eventually, Rio will get the kill. But overall, Origin is playing these fights smarter, better, and just more well paced. Oruwamne got one reckless swing off towards the end of that fight. I beat it. And Niels was free hitting the entire time, so well played by Ryu to at least get the kill there. That might actually be worth it, just sacrificing one kill, uh, not with a shutdown, but just to get the enemy flash down, because you're about to set up Baron Baits. Having an extra carry there without a flash, yeah, could prove worth it. Yeah, it's okay, it needs to move their massive red arrow key they have above the head of Pekka over to Niels, because... Uh, Oh, Rami just ran right by him. We're like, ah, I don't care about you. I'm gonna chase this Aryu who can jump around. Yeah. Didn't get to use his ulti at all. Complete waste from H2K. And these uh, fights basically cost them everything in this game. 6,000 gold down. That's H2K. The two dragons down. Two towers down. And Origin have got the vision to set up for two barons to make it go down. We did see Soez back to respond to Odo Wamna down in the bottom lane. Lulex takes chunk of damage, but there's not enough burst here from Pekka to solo out the fairly tanky Lulex. Yeah, because Pekka is sitting on 540 ability power already, and it's only going to get worse over time. So he's 
almost becoming a threat. Mitty gets popped here. Stan United gets used, so he has to re-engage. Both ultimates used. This is all right if nobody can, gets connected by the ton here. Point does not connect. Lulix flashes defensively. But Kasing, the sacrificial diver, the rest of H2K trying to reposition. But now it's a 4v5 and a potential battle. H2K just going in and looking for desperate fights. Honestly, probably already starting to talk about what went wrong, what can we do next. Look here what Mithy is doing as well. One of our new items in the game, the Harbinger. Or Harbinger, however you want to pronounce it. To buff up this hyper carry in the late game. Nils is going to be such a Oi. big throw down there. He just gets hit, but then Mithy with great positioning gets a knock up onto Ryu as well. Wild Growth has come back up, and that means Ryu's been dropped. Oduwamne will fall to another pulverized headbutt. When you can knock an O up into your team confidently and not by accident, you have a sizable lead in the mid game. Yeah, can he do what Piglet did in North America? I don't think so. He's going to be needing a really big one for that one. <laughs> Not going to be able to. Wow, Lulix gets caught out. Off screen there, looked like Peke was zoning out Jan. And Baron number two to Origin. So what do we learn from this game here? Game one, we haven't seen Origin in three weeks. We saw H2K, 3-0 Giants, completely destroyed him in the quarterfinal. What we've seen now here is that Origin, in these 5-on-5 five -five team fights, are looking more coordinated and at least better at deciding when do we want to fight. H2K and their engages have been very reckless, honestly. It's just like Ludex going in trying to beat a hero, or they're pulling him without Old Omni being there. So big mistakes in the team fights that needs to be fixed if they want to beat Origin. I think reckless engages are fine with this composition. As long as you make him, you play him well, and everybody's on the same page. You can go in a little farther than you would normally go because you have all these tools to buff that one man Olaf, you know, and then you can flank with Lee Sin, but they're so, so telegraphed. Every single engage from H2K, we could have spotted from like five seconds away, unless it was this random flash in from Kasing at one point, where even Origin didn't even need to be ready because it was simply just three man advantage in that play overall. Origin are more well poised to take this game. Talking about H2K not being on the same page, Dragon was up. They couldn't have really contested anyway. Kasing forced to flash defensively, while Origin pick up Dragon number four. They're one away from Aspect. Now they don't even need it to finish this out. They will. Group themselves up towards middle. Ryu with no global. He's sticking around. He's also got Oda One there. This is a little bit of time with this inhibitor uncontested. It's down. That inhibitor turret's taken. H2K, a big mistake. We'll lose their inhibitor as well. Just for H2K, trying to look for some of the crazy plays here in the end. Engage though from Amazing. Amazing engages. That's a great knockup. Ryu's already down. Niels grabs his fifth kill of the game. So it's just yet another taunt. We did see that depth charge, or the kickback rather, from Lulex being used. Engage from Mithy once more. Aggressive flash. They've caught Kasing. He will be falling. He throws out the mine, but it does not matter. Baron empowered minions at the 35th minute. Will be taking down the Nexus turret on the left. Origin turned their attention to the second. And in 35 minutes, explosively dismantle H2K. For me, it comes down to hesitation. Special on H2K side, that second dragon, I think is something that just highlights the entire series so far because they could have easily moved in, put up vision, worked together as a team, contested that, realized that they had a bigger power spike, goal advantage. They just weren't as aware of their surroundings, both in their map plays as in their engages. So often you pointed it out. They went in, Oruam, the, the, the crux of this composition was nowhere to be found until about 10 seconds into the fight. Yeah, you're gonna lose then. And the one time they had Oramne with them in the mid lane, Chase they were fighting body. basically all the way down to the tier two tower of origin, which in the end costed them two kills because they got knocked back into the towers. And instead of them winning that fight with where the composition were probably the strongest, it went even. And origin then was simply almost gifted when it came to the engages, how easy it was for them to play out team fights. Now, I do think if origin run a similar composition and play the lane stop the same way, they do leave areas where they can get exploited. Those two early towers could have fallen quicker with some better execution. And especially the part where they swap away Soas from the bot lane to the top lane to prioritize Niels in farm, that could have been an opening. Sadly enough, for hdk they didn't play that well enough. And uh, Origin managed to capitalize and keep themselves in the early to mid game long enough to scale. Yeah, went even for a very long period of time before those engages hurt H2K. We're going to head over to the analyst there to take another closer